How did you come up with uh, your PhD and this thing called the information economy? It's really a good question. You know, I, my formative years, I'm an immigrant. And, uh, my but form from England? From England, but actually born in Israel. Okay. Educated in England and then through, yeah, then here. And, and in my late teens and early 20s, there were five revolutions going on hmm. at the same time. I was, it was a revolutionary era. Uh, there was, the Vietnam War was raging, and we had that culture war that's similar to what we have now, real division. The feminist movement was, was, was roaring, starting to roar. The environmental movement was, was the civil rights. I went and organized in the South. And counterculture. So for, for the, my milieu, uh, in the context that you're asking about, is that revolutions are interesting. What we learned from that is that the rules as they're given to us by society are arbitrary. We, we have the right to rethink them. We, had, we took the right to, dis, to be what they now call to be disruptive. We didn't know that at the time. <laughs> that's what we're doing. So that's why these five revolutions that, I, that we were immersed in Basically, I think was the entrepreneurial spark for me that said, invent your own. If you don't like what you're seeing, make it better. So with that, when now, now fast forward to Stanford, I was interested in another revolution, which is the information revolution that I knew was coming. People were talking about the transformation from, you know, from industrial to services. I didn't think it was services. Services are, they can be a restaurant work, work or they can be a computer work. I thought it was something more profound than that. And, and technology driven, you know, I had seen the power of television. When Walter Cronkite said, stop the war in Vietnam, it stopped, <laughs> essentially. Um, I, you know, computers were, were beginning to be everywhere, uh, big ones, big powerful ones. And I had done my work on, in, in, on a supercomputer, no, sorry, at that time, supercomputer, now it's a tiny little thing. But it was a computer at Columbia. I lived in the Columbia Computer Center. So it was, computers were there. But you were majoring in psychology. I was, in sociology. And yeah, so what were you doing in the computer center? I was doing math. And I was doing statistics. I ah. was doing modeling. I was doing simulations. I was doing all kinds of things. So coming to Stanford was a natural to then go from there. You know, my dad wrote a book called Microprocessors. Oh. One of the first books I've written on the subject. So. And he was working at Slack. He was at Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, which is why we're here. So, <laughs> in, in, uh, so in any event, that was the context. The context was, what's this revolution about? And I wanted to, it was a PhD, I wanted to make it real. And, uh, and so I did macroeconomics and documented the rise of the information economy. You documented the rise. Yes, yes. Indeed. Was it confined to a certain geography, or was it uh, worldwide? We, I looked, I looked specifically at the United States, uh, and what we looked at was the, was the transformation of the workforce uh, to information workers, people like you, for example, who you know who, who deal in the world of symbols and knowledge. That's what you deal in, and you're enhanced by technology. Couldn't do it without the technology, and so. You're an information worker, and I counted how many are there, and where do they work. And in 19, I forecasted that in 1986, there would be a crossover, more information workers than, than any other sector. And that's what happened. And that's exactly what happened. So the way you describe it, I, I hope I got this right, yes. the information economy is to produce, process, or transmit economically viable information. Yes using information machines and information workers and information companies.